Hello, everybody. How are you? Oh, and it's summer almost. Or, yes. I wrote this song just for summer, actually. Let the sun shine, shine on you today. Feel that sunshine. It feels so good. It feels so fine. Let that sunshine. Let the sunshine shine on you today. Let that sunshine. to be here with you. And I actually picture all the people that listen in, you know, or watch, I should say, and know that they're right where we are in spirit, because wherever God is, they are there with us too. Everybody is. Yes. So because of the divine audacity we've been talking about, um, the light, you know, we're going to, we are going to try this. <laughs> I am the light. I am the light. So we'll do I am and we'll do the whole verse. You are and then we are. How about that? Okay. Here we go. I am the light. Gorgeous. I am the light. I am the light in this world. I am the light. I am the light. I am the light in this world. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. You sound good. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. You are. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light in this world. Think of someone you love. You are the light, you are the light, you are the light in this world. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. We're going to do we, and maybe you'd like to take a peek around and look and see if there's anyone you can sing to or just think of someone you'd like to say this to, including yourself. Here we go. We are the light. We are the light. We are the light in this world. We are the light. We are the light. We are the light in this world. And we shine and we shine. And we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. 
and we shine so bright. That was gorgeous, everybody. Beautiful. That was wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Karen. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day you are celebrating. We're glad you're celebrating <laughs> with us. It is good, right? Time is merely a human construct. So welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. David Goldberg. I'm honored to serve as one of the co-ministers here at Unity on the Avenue Spiritual Center. And as you hear us affirm every week, we are a radically inclusive spiritual center. We honor all people. We bless all races, all gender identities and relational orientations, and we honor all faith traditions. So wherever you are on your journey, thank you for spending part of that with us. It's our joy to be on this path with you. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, some of you may have read or heard uh, that today, because of billing, was going to be Reverend Doris's and my first talk together. Uh, Reverend Doris is still a bit under the weather. She's coming back strong, and it's fully her intention to re-engage this week and be here next Sunday. And as well, I wanted to offer birthday greetings to Heidi Houston, the co-president of our board, who's celebrating today, and she too is under the weather. So whatever you can offer by way of uh, healing energy and knowing health and wellness for all who support our community, I'm sure that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, that we're, we've got a new chaplaincy training program starting with Dr. Carol Braun, and that is going to be taking place the first week in June. So if you would like more information about that, please reach out to Carol. She will be here and available when she is complete holding consciousness for us during this service. And also, wanted to highlight once again Comedy on the Avenue 2.0. It's the return of our comedy night. It was a big hit last year. Uh, tickets are already flying off of the internet. So uh, grab a flyer at the back of the room. It's going to be Saturday, June 18th. And it was a whole lot of fun, and we've got the same lineup this year. So hopefully I can get some new material in the next month, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so uh, it is good, it is all good, and we are blessed. And one of the things that we also like to affirm every week is that everything that we do here at Unity on the Avenue is grounded in prayer. And we are so grateful to all who serve as our chaplain prayer partners as an extension of the ecclesiastical body here at Unity on the Avenue. Today, we have two of our wonderful chaplains in service. Carol Braun is holding consciousness during the service, and she will be available to pray with you after the service. If you have something going on in your life, you'd like some one-to-one -one prayer, either in celebration of some good news, or perhaps being able to hold the space for you as you might be working through some challenges. It is all good, and it's a powerful practice that I invite you uh, to take advantage of. And we also welcome uh, Opal James, who is going to offer a reading for us this morning and lead us in our statement of faith. Surely the presence of God is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Surely the presence of God is in this place. 
I can feel the mighty power and the grace. I can hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of God is in this place. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Unity on the Avenue. And keeping with our theme, Flowing with the Divine, this morning, I would like for you just to relax and to feel this prayer as we abide with the Divine. Let us focus on the sacred space where we abide in this presence, Divine Spirit, today, we pause to remember our truth. We are perfectly one with the one, just as a drop of water is part of the sea. We can sometimes forget, but we are never separate from that divine love and guidance. If we but pause to listen, to listen to that small voice within, today we release regrets of the past, for the past they rob us of that peace of this moment. Today we release all worries about the future. It will come and go according to divine timing. We cannot resist the celestial ebb and flow of change, for change is everywhere, just as we cannot stop a wave. As we relax into the flow of all that is, all that is love, we feel love, we feel peace, and infinite possibilities. Embrace us and show us our way. And from Charles Fillmore, keep a true length. Faith is the perceiving power of the mind, linked with a power to shape substance. It is spiritual assurance the power to do the seemingly impossible. It is a force that draws to us our heart's desires right out of the universe, the invisible spirit, substance. It's deeper inner knowing that which is sought is always yours for the taking. Just rest in the assurance that faith is the things hoped for. Please join me in reading our statement of faith. There is one power and one presence in my life and in the universe. God the good, omnipotent. Alleluia. Alleluia. Sing with me, please. Alleluia, Alleluia, yes, Alleluia, 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 we are one. We are one now. 
have got to act, accentuate the positive. E eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative but don't do not miss Mr. in between and you have got to spread joy to the maximum and leave all gloom right down at the minimum and have faith or pandemonium is liable to walk upon that scene to illustrate my last remark Jonah and the whale Noah and the ark what did they do just when it Blessings, Karen, one Thank of the most David. positive people I know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So once again, welcome wherever you are on your journey, however you have found us, whether this is your first time or whether you've been with us for decades or whether perhaps you've been away for a while and you're just dipping your toe back in the water. It's perfect. You're loved. You're honored. You're blessed. Before I jump into my talk, we do have another uh, video message from the author of the book we're studying. We're looking at Divine Audacity, Dare to Be the Light of the World. And the author is Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett. And in her spare time, Reverend Linda is the head of Silent Unity at Unity Worldwide Headquarters. Reverend Linda. Happy day to each one of you at Unity on the Avenue. Reverend Doris and Dr. David invited me to pop in and say hello. I'm just delighted that you've all found one another in this Unity community, and I'm thrilled that you'll be focusing on uh, your spiritual capacities in the coming months, especially as they're explained in my book, Divine Audacity, Dare to be the Light of the World. Well, you have not one, but two divinely audacious ministers who have been called and have been drawn to you by the activity of divine love to be in sacred service in your community. Not only are you fortunate, but I bet you that they would say that they too are fortunate. 
you know, you'll have a practice field there for cultivating your spiritual capacities together in this community with a shared mission and vision and a high calling to shine the light of divine love, wisdom, strength, and order, and all spiritual powers as you establish the kingdom of the heavens right there where you are in one another's company. Well, I'm celebrating with you and I'm celebrating you. Nice. We're so grateful to Reverend Linda. She has a few things on her plate. And for those of you who were here a couple of weeks ago, she shared a, a longer video then introducing us to her book. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful for her love and her attention as we continue to explore divine audacity. And as I was sharing with you, I just became aware of this story actually uh, yesterday and today. This is a story about a young woman named Elizabeth Bonker. Elizabeth Bonker hasn't spoken since the age of 15 months because of autism, but she managed to deliver an inspiring commencement speech for the graduating class of Rollins College. Elizabeth, now 24, is one of five valedictorians in her class to achieve a perfect 4.0 GPA. She used a text-to-speech computer program to communicate to the 529 graduating students and their families. Elizabeth, who graduated with a degree in social innovation, wrote her speech with one finger while a communication partner held the keyboard. Let us all honor Elizabeth by looking at, seeing, and continuing to be the light. That just spoke to my heart, I can't imagine. Um, not speaking since being 15 months old and delivering a commencement address typed with one finger. That, my friends, is divine audacity. She didn't accept any limitations that anybody might have tried to project on her. She didn't accept any diagnoses. She knew what was hers to do. She knew what her innate capability and ability was and is. And she continues to create a divinely audacious life in conjunction with her interpretation of the divine. I don't know Elizabeth, and that is my loss. I bless her as she steps out into the world with all those who are graduating this year from middle school, from high school, from college, from trade school, from whatever joyous celebration is marking those milestones of completion and beginning once again. I bless all of those individuals. So what we know then, uh, Reverend Doris and I did have a chance to speak this week, and what we know about divine audacity is Linda works through the 12 powers of unity as originally conceived by our co-founder, Charles Fillmore. And as I continue to learn more about unity and dive deeper into my teachings, it brings me great joy. I'm actually taking a class on the 12 powers now through Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute. And this is the book that we're using uh, called The 12 Powers. I love it when the title matches the content. And it is by Charles Fillmore and Cora Fillmore. His uh, second wife, uh, they were married two or three years after Myrtle made her transition. And it is part of the Unity Classic Library series. And I'm also uh, humbled to have uh, this version of The Twelve Powers of Man by Charles Fillmore. And I just wanted to share with you something from the introductory page uh, from this book that shares, this is a standard Unity book, which first appeared in 1930. Direct and to the point, thank you so much. 
And this one, having gone through a few editors, and you know, people sometimes get paid by the word, um, this one says, this is the first combined edition, and uh, I'm sorry, the first combined edition was published in 1999. The fourth printing was in 2005. The ninth soft cover printing was in 2011. Now that's a way too much information, and I'm grateful that somebody's keeping track. It also says, the Unity Classic Library is guided by the belief of Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore that whatever God has revealed to man in one age, he will continue to reveal to him in all ages. So that, my friends, in a nutshell, is why we are studying or looking at the 12 powers as posited by Charles Fillmore. Now, it's interesting to me that he chose 12 powers. Uh, some say it aligns with the chakras, and he indeed has assigned a chakra. Uh, some people work with seven chakras, some people work with 11 chakras. Charles Fillmore chose to work with 12. So each chakra is aligned with one of the spiritual powers, one of the 12 powers, and the magic number of 12 is also aligned with the 12 disciples. So uh, the chakras were added, according to Reverend Doris, I think, in the 70s. So we continue to be grounded in principle, and we learn, we grow, and we expand, right? As we gain more information, as it helps us to become, uh, not become, as it helps us to stay relevant in the, in the current age. So, uh, oh my gosh, I have so much highlighted, I have so many flags in here, and the thing that I wanted to share with you that we're focusing on a bit today is part two of the book, where Reverend Linda gets into all spiritual abilities share one source. That is what we know to be true, right? Because otherwise we're talking about dualism. We're talking about more than one divine power or more than one divine presence. So all spiritual attributes share one source. She also highlights all spiritual abilities are inherent. So the good news is you don't have to do anything different. When you came onto the planet, you came with all of these powers. And so, as we co-create our existence with the divine, it's simply a matter of which of these powers are we calling forward. So the objective, the enlightenment, the consciousness is to be all 12 powers all of the time. And I would share with you, I haven't even come close. And that is what we get to work toward. And then uh, Linda also says, all spiritual abilities must be directed. And that is what we know as, as people on a spiritual path, right? As people following a faith tradition. We are choosing to consciously engage in that which is ours to do. Uh, and so, we know that our friends in mystical Judaism, we know that our friends who study the Kabbalah, spend up to one year on each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So too with the 12 powers. There are unity teachers, there are unity ministers who have been through the process of spending up to a year, perhaps more in some cases, on every one of the 12 powers of man. So you see, that is something that Charles and uh, Merle Fillmore were so good at, is looking for those common threads, looking for those golden threads through all of the world's major traditions. And so as we look at that then, when she says all spiritual abilities must be directed, she highlights by itself each ability is neutral. And that is what we know to be true, that everything is just energy and information until we choose to label it. So I get to say this power is good or this power is bad or I want to shift or redirect this power. That is part of our human agency. That is what we get to co-create with the divine. She said the personal self longs for greatness. 
And for me, that says that's not from a place of human ego and that's not from a place of narcissism, but rather if the one power, the one presence that created me continues to dwell in me and express as me, then when I put myself first, I'm putting God first, you see. So many of us are excellent caregivers. We know how to put our families first our spouses, our parents, our kids, our grandkids, our great-grandkids. We know how to do that. I don't have to go to the gym. I can do this for you, right? We, we, that comes almost innately to so many of us. And my sense is what Linda is suggesting, part of our life lesson is to put ourselves first. Because, bless you, when we do that, we're putting God first. She did say, our spiritual abilities need training. And she quotes uh, Charles Fillmore. When man is developing out of mere personal consciousness into spiritual consciousness, he begins to train deeper and larger powers. He sends his thought down into the intercenters of his organism and through his word quickens them to life. I love that. Quickens them to life. Where before his powers have worked in the personal, now they begin to expand and work in the universal. And isn't that what is ours to do? We know that everything is created twice, once in mind and once in reality. So the invitation here is for us to do that individual work, to dive into these 12 powers, these 12 God qualities, these 12 friends, uh, whatever term works for you, don't lose the message through the messenger, right? We get to dive into these God qualities and see how we choose to interpret them and what that looks like for us. Charles Fillmore referred to this training work, uh, referred to this training as the work of regeneration or transformation. And isn't that what we're seeking? And again, that is what we know. When we do the work ourselves, when we come together in community, that work is amplified, and thus, that's how we raise the vibration on the planet. So, if we don't like what's going on in some part of the world, if we don't like war, if we don't like hunger, if we don't like people experiencing homelessness, we can certainly travel and help out with our own feet on the street. We can give of our treasure, right, to causes and organizations that are supportive. And if you, like me, have ever said, oh, I feel badly, but there's nothing I can do about that over there, well, my friends, there's something we can all do. We can pray. We can do spiritual mind treatment. We can pray the rosary. Whatever your tradition, whatever your mode of appreciation and connection with the divine, that's equally as powerful and important as anything else that we can offer. So another piece uh, that, that spoke to me in Linda's work is she said... The, the animating power of life does not merely happen to us. We wield the animating power. Huh. Does that sound familiar? We are in control of who we are and what we do and how we choose to show up. The Hebrew law, thou shalt not kill, Exodus 20, 13, is a call not simply to refrain from ending another life. It is a call to access a higher life, a higher vibration of wholeness and harmony. So she restates it as, thou shalt give life. Hmm, resonates at a higher level for me. The opposite of life is not death. The opposite of life is stagnation. Mm. And she offers the affirmation, remind yourself, I give life to my dreams, the dreams I give life to live. 
And she goes on, and you can read it, and I can read it, and uh, I, just, I just love what she's telling us here and what she's talking about. And she goes on to state, think like a whole being and act like a whole being. As metaphysicians, we are monotheistic. We believe in one power, one presence, whatever we choose to call it. God, Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, Yahweh, Dr. Seuss. You see, spirit doesn't care. Spirit doesn't care what we call it or him or her or them because that one power, that one presence is so much larger than any one language, indeed larger than all of the languages on the planet. So what you are doing is right and good and perfect for you. I wanted to share uh, another story of another audacious being. And I, I have to say, I haven't read a lot of her work and what I know. Um, I, I want to spend more time with this. And this is, a, this is from the paper, as you can see. And the headline is, Writer slash activist Alice Walker has no regrets. And I'll just read you a piece of it. It just, it just struck me right in my solar plexus. Alice Walker is one of the most renowned and complex public figures of her generation. Born to sharecroppers in rural Georgia and raised in homes without electricity or indoor plumbing, Walker became an activist and prolific writer with 41 books across many genres. Her 1982 book, The Color Purple, an epistolary novel addressed largely to God, which focused on the experience of poor black women in the American South, was awarded a Pulitzer Prize. She was the first black woman to win the prize in fiction. In recent years, she's taken positions, including in the New York Times, that many have found to be anti-Semitic and deeply troubling. Her stances have cast a shadow over her legacy, leaving readers to grapple with how to approach Walker and her work. Oh, my goodness. And it goes on. Into this fraught conversation comes a new book by Walker, Gathering Blossoms Under Fire a collection of her diaries spanning 1965 to 2000. The book covers when Walker, now 78, became a towering figure in the American cultural landscape and precedes the accusations of anti-Semitism in recent years. Beyond the personal insights, heartbreaks, and triumphs they cover, Walker's journal talk I'm sorry, track a life that has intersected with some of the most significant issues of 20th century America. She was active in the civil rights movement and had an illegal abortion in the 1960s. She and her now ex-husband, Melvin Leventhal, who is white and Jewish, moved to Mississippi the same summer the Supreme Court outlawed state bans on interracial marriage. Their daughter, Rebecca, was born there. Walker had romantic relationships with men and women and wrote candidly about the evolution of her sexual identity. Now, that is divinely audacious, my friends. She is who she is. She wasn't going to let the Supreme Court tell her what she could or couldn't do. She speaks her mind, what is in her mind and what is in her heart and what she has going on. And I love the headline that she has no regrets. So one last piece then. The rights and the power of women are themes throughout Walker's writing. She was a contributing editor at Ms. Magazine for a few years in the 70s, and she, she is credited with creating the term womanist, which is defined at the beginning of her essay collection 
in search of our mother's gardens. So this is her definition of the word that she is credited with creating, womanist. A black feminist or feminist of color. From the black folk expression of mothers to female children, you acting womanish, i.e. like a woman, usually referring to outrageous, audacious, courageous, or willful behavior. Audacious, there's that word again, right? And that is her definition of what that looks like and what that feels like. So what we are exploring then are the 12 powers as created by or as originally noted by Charles Fillmore and the interpretation then in what it looks like for us in these modern times. So I know that you know how to read. If you've been able to engage in the book with us, that's perfect. Our book club is also reading it. Thank you and thank you. Uh, we are so grateful for that. And if you're not familiar with it at all, I invite you to, to check it out, whether an online version or a hard copy, and explore what we are talking about when we talk about the 12 powers. So just by way of highlighting that then, what that looks like when we're talking about the 12 powers. The first one, uh, and Linda, Reverend Linda calls them lights uh, in her terminology or powers in the Filmorian languaging. The first is that of faith, the light of faith. Then we move into the light of understanding, the light of will, the light of imagination, the light of zeal, the light of power, the light of love, the light of wisdom, the light of strength, the light of order, the light of release, and the light of life. So over the next three months then, over the summer, uh, Reverend Doris and I will be unpacking one of those powers each week. It's not our intention to spend the entire talk focused on that, and we will uh, do our best to weave that through as Charles and, and Cora and Reverend Linda have done so beautifully. So as we think about being the light of the world with the music, with the prayer, with the blessings, Spoiler alert, my friends, this is not something you have to do. This is something you already are. This is something you came onto the planet with. Once again, if I believe that the one power, the one presence that created me continues to dwell in me and express as me, why would God make anything that is less than perfect? So I invite you into that Christ consciousness that is you, whatever, whatever name you call it, however you relate to your higher power. And I invite you to consider that the word sin, as we have shared before in archery, sin means simply missing the mark. So when I fire my arrow at the target and I miss the mark, that is a sin. So what is our work being on a spiritual path? If we choose, we get to engage, to, to get better, to get more focused, to align our arrow with the target, thus eliminating the sin, you see. And I would also share with you that guilt is another human construct that is really not very helpful. So should you be in that place of feeling guilty about anyone or anything in your life, hmm, I invite you to bless it and gently release it from the nothingness from which it came. That is not who you are. That is part of the race consciousness that has been implanted upon many, if not all of us at some point. And as we are creating room for more good, for more positive, for more prosperity, for more abundance, and anything that we are calling in, 
we also get to release that which no longer serves us. So that is what we get to do, and that is what we get to release and let go of to create more room for more of what we want. As I move to a close then, I wanted to invite you into the story of my mother's best friend, Pat. Uh, my mom passed in, in 1990, and Pat is still with us, and she and her daughter have been with us here on occasion. And I just learned, having known Pat my whole life, that she spent the first five years of her life in an orphanage. She knew her mother, she knew her brother, she knew her grandparents, she knew her extended family. Her mother couldn't afford to raise her when she was born in the 30s. So she, uh, her mother, Louise, took Pat to the orphanage and surrendered Pat to the orphanage. And the orphanage raised her and Pat lived there for the first five years of her life, having visits with her mother on occasion. And every time she saw her mother, she would beg with her and she would plead, can I come home? I'll do anything. I'll get a job. I'll help. I'll do whatever you need me to do. And finally, uh, as she was turning five, I think uh, she may have worn her mom down and bless her mom for continuing to stay in touch. And she said, okay, you can come home and this is what we need help with and this is what the family is doing. And I didn't know that part of her story and honestly, I didn't know that was a possibility for anyone uh, having the experience of being an orphan or being raised uh, in an institutional setting. And fast forward to last month, uh, Valerie, her daughter, uh, gave us a call and she said, you know, mom really likes to go up the hill. She has a really good time in Blackhawk. That's code for let's go gambling. So, uh, Rick and I are oh so pious and we thought, well, we need to do this to be with our friends. So, so we went and we had a blast. And, we pl and uh, Pat has her walker decorated and she has all kinds of goodies in her little uh, treat drawer that she can also sit on. And we played slot machines and we ate at the buffet and we heard stories. And uh, yep, she won a $600 jackpot. So <laughs> we all had to be much nicer to her. Um, and my point is my friends, Pat made the choice at a very young age to be audacious. She could have let that define her for her whole life. And indeed, it's part of her story, as of course it should be. And she got married, and she entered beauty pageants, and she and my mom were not excited about graduating in 1951. I don't know that they ever heard the term numerology, but they didn't like the odd number. So they went to summer school, and they graduated in 1950. Thank you very much. And that was one of the stories that I learned as part of our dinner. And anyway, she got married, she had five children, one of whom died as an infant. Again, another possibility to have a defining moment. And she loves that baby and she talks of that baby often. And she also talks of her four surviving children and their spouses and their grandchildren and their great grandchildren. So what is it, my friends? What is it in you that is divinely audacious? What is it in you? What is the story that you want to tell? We had the great fortune yesterday to go to a birthday party for my one-year-old great-niece. And they took this picture, and I'll, I'll share it with you as I can, perhaps on the screen at some point. And there were these six or seven dads all of these uh, young men in their 20s and 30s, all w holding their babies, all with their infants. 
And it was such a joyful juxtaposition. Of course men can be caregivers. Of course men know how to change diapers. And they were being divinely audacious and standing with their buddies and standing with their babies and loving their spouses. And we had to leave that party before the one-year-old got to tear into her presence because we went to a birthday party for my 92-year-old godmother. And she is still living on her own, and she was wearing her purple suit, and she was wearing her sash, and she was wearing her crown, and after everybody had something to eat, and her daughter and, and sons were lighting the candles on the cake, they weren't even close to 92, and we were all singeing the hair on our arms, um, and everybody burst into happy birthday, as we always do, and she just stood there by herself, singing happy birthday to herself, <laughs> along with everybody else. And her message to me is, honey, I'm going to live until I die. And I invite you into that as well, beloveds. That is being divinely audacious. That is, yes, I have challenges. And all things being equal, I wouldn't want to deal with this or that or the other thing. And I'm grateful to be here right now, right now. I'm grateful to be with my beloved. I'm grateful to be alone, knowing my connection to the divine. I'm grateful for my family, for my friends, for my extended family, for my spiritual community. That is what we know. That is the upliftment that we get to acknowledge, that we get to see every day. We can be in that space of being a victim, as my friend Pat, who was raised for five years in an orphanage, or our beloved Olga, who was the youngest of 13 children, and tells the story of having to use water to smooth over the adobe mud in the hut and hang a sheet so it wouldn't drop on her head. She could have gotten all wound up in her professional story of having taken the Colorado real estate exam 14 times, Math was not her friend, and she was audacious. I just need to get one more question right. I just need to do this one more time. I just need to review that once more. And when she passed, she had extraordinary success in the real estate world. To see, and she's, you know, she's what, Judy? She's probably 4'11", if she wears heels and she's tiny and she's petite and she is audacious and to see this beloved behind the wheel of her mercedes that she earned and it driving people to real estate appointments and i said ogie that's awesome it's none of my business but how much did you make in commission oh honey i couldn't charge them they're a new family <laughs> next week ogie that's great what what did you pull in on that one are you buying lunch Oh, honey, I couldn't charge them. She's a single mom. <laughs> I've never known anybody who did real estate as a pro bono effort. <laughs> <clears throat> so if, if you gain anything from today, my friends, what I know to be true is this is your story as well. I know that you have these stories to share, each and every one of you. And I bless you and I thank you for taking up more space on the planet for goodness, for graciousness, for happiness, for gratitude, and yes, for love. Please join me in prayer. So this day, in the gloriousness that is this Colorado Spring Day, I just call in all the goodness that God has in store for every being, for those within the sound of my voice, for every sentient being on the planet, because I know that goodness, I know that joy, I know that happiness, I know that connection is our natural state. And anything that looks unlike that, anything that looks like I can't, I won't, I shouldn't, I'm too old, I'm not enough this, I'm too much that, no. 
I release that. I release that on behalf of all of us as we step into our divine audacity, knowing that God doesn't create any junk, knowing that I am whole, perfect, and complete, knowing that you are extraordinary in every moment of every day. And when you can't remember that for yourself, I am honored to remember that for you. That is what I choose to do. That is my work. That is the work of our chaplain prayer partners. That is the work of the leaders of this community. We see you. We see you wherever you are on your journey. Hmm. And so I claim divine audacity for each and every one of us, whatever that looks like. Nothing needs to change. Nothing needs to be uprooted. We don't need to do a 180. We just need to claim that which already is ours. So I claim that. I claim that on behalf of you, on, be on behalf of all whom you love, on behalf of all of the lives that you have touched, known and unknown. And I call this time divinely inspired and divinely appointed. I love it. I bless it. I honor it. I gently release it. And if you are in agreement, we anchor these words together by saying, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. <sighs> Goodness. Thank you. What a blessing it is to be with you. For those joining us online, thank you for joining us in perfect time. We know that we'll see you in our sanctuary at exactly the right moment. And so, my friends, this is our time to give where we are spiritually fed. We are so grateful for your gifts and for your offerings. Uh, we just had a board meeting yesterday, and we continue to be blessed by everything that you do and so many gifts by so many people in so many ways. We have a number of ways for you to give, of course, in person, through technology, online, in person. We'd love to connect with you and humbly accept your gifts and your cash as well. So if you would, please join me in the blessing of our tithes and offerings. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
everything I hoped for, everything I need. You are so beautiful. And that is the truth. That is what we know to be true. And as we always do, we offer a blessing for the children in this community and in, in the world. Let us rub our hands together, generate that powerful energy for these giant souls with short legs. You are loved, special, and important. We see you and bless the divine being that you are. And so it is. And and now, our prayer for protection. Please join me. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Go in power, go in peace. Let the sun shine, shine on you today. Feel that sun shine. Let it warm your heart, your soul, and your mind. Let that sun shine, sun shine, sun shine. Sunshine, 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 let it shine.